My next guest says it's entirely possible that Miranda Derrick doesn't even realize that she's in a cult. Sarah Edmondson should know. She is an ex-member of the Nexium cult, and she's the author of the book Scarred, the true story of how I escaped Nexium, the cult that bound my life. She is also the host of the podcast, A Little Bit Culty, and she joins me now live. Sarah, it's really good to see you. Um, we just had a chance to see each good other see at CrimeCon. It's good to... Yeah, it's good to be able to interview you about this topic. It's like so near and dear um, to your heart. I just wanted to get your take on what you're seeing here. Sure. Thanks for having me on, Ashley. You know, we've, we've had this cult on our radar since oh, a few years now, since I actually think since Melanie first went public with her live stream. And it certainly ticked all the boxes for me from day one. But uh, I, one of the things I really wanted to share with your audience and anyone who might be wanting to reach out to um, Miranda is that when you're in a cult, you really don't think you're in a cult. And we don't even have to use the word cult, especially for her. I would even say like a high control group or high control religion. She's in a situation that for her, she's doubled down in that she believes is something really good. And unfortunately, that type of negative um, response from the world from this documentary is only going to push her in further, which is my concern. Do you see? Yeah, I was going to ask if you see some parallels to yourself, <laughs> your own situation and where you were with Nexium. Absolutely. In fact, it was so parallel in terms of especially the hook that these dancers were given. And I thought the Netflix documentary did do a great job of showing what the appeal would be. Um, I'm personally not a religious person and, and the church part wouldn't be a, a poll, but this type of community with like-minded dancers and making content, especially if you're a sort of typical starving artist in Los Angeles or even, you know, finding money for rent is hard. That's all provided. And somebody who's going to help you manage your career, all of those things would be a an incredible draw. So I totally get that. And then some of the things that have, have happened, you know, apparently from the dock behind closed doors, being isolated from friends and family, being instructed to tell on each other if you don't follow the rules, um, the sort of us versus them mentality of like, it's us and we, this is the right path. And of course, we weren't religious, but we were very righteous and kind of like evangelical personal development pushers. And I feel like this, this type of connection to Jesus isn't actually uh, that clean. It's connection to Robert, who is saying he's got the, the connection to God and Jesus, which is a total red flag for me. Anyone who says that they are talking to God and Jesus, run. I've always felt uh, that anybody who says that have, they've had personal conversations, <laughs> that's a hell of a red flag. Uh, pardon yeah. the pun. But listen, um, mm -hmm. the, the idea that Robert Shin might be behind Miranda's latest posts, you know, hate mail and, and blaming families, et cetera. Do, do you think that's uh, blaming the families? I, I think she's blaming the trolls yeah. for sure. But what do you make of that? Do you think that's a possibility? There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, there probably are some trolls and people saying hateful things who don't understand how cults work. And I would also not be surprised if he had some other people go online and create fake accounts just to say threatening things to scare her. The goal of the cult leader is to keep people dependent and keep people in. So if he can create a fear of the outside world, that's great for him. And this just plays into the fact that he's making her feel like a victim, even though she says she's not a victim. And now now, now she's a victim to the family. So this back to the us versus them structure that all cults thrive on. Well, and to the haters too, right? I think it was India mm -hmm. Oxenberg, your fellow uh, Nexium cult member, who came out publicly and said that the the public really needs to uh, sympathize and love her, not hate her, because yes. like you just said, it will push her further uh, to those who she's close to and can explain away uh, with love bombing. Absolutely. The more hate and vitriol she gets from the outside world, the further that she's going to want to go into Shekinah and to 7M and feel vindicated that Robert's right. It's not safe out there. So I, I really encourage people to be loving, send lifelines, send messages. And also, you know, one of the things that helped me wake up, um, you know, obviously way too late after 12 years, but was kind people asking curious questions and planting seeds and saying things like, but what about all this media that that is against Keith? And I would say, well, that's a smear campaign. And somebody said to me, but that's it can't be all a smear campaign. What if a little bit of it is true? And that I didn't wake up then, but it planted a seed for me to think, OK, what if even 10 percent of what people say about Keith Raniere is true? 
then that's a problem for me. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.